Fantastic. So, yeah, this has been a, it's been an incredible uh, collection of talks and perspectives here on humanoid robotics. And I'm, uh, you know, I'm really, compared to many of the speakers here, I'm relatively a newbie where humanoid robotics goes, but I have been working on AI for a long time. And I, re I really came into the humanoid robotics space and the social robotics space because of what I saw that it, that it had to offer, uh, as me as a, as a, an AI researcher interested in, in both delivering, you know, practical value to people with AI systems and, and in working toward general intelligence in the in the in the longer term which of course can deliver more practical value than any any narrow ai system once you get there so i mean i've been doing ai since since the mid 1980s i've seen the ai field go through many many changes and and uh and revolutions but uh some some things have not changed through all these uh all these decades of working on ai i mean the core algorithms and approaches haven't changed. We're still doing multi-layer neural nets, like in the 60s, 70s, and, and 80s. We're still connecting neural nets with logic systems and evolutionary systems like we have since the 70s. And we're we're still wrestling with basic ideas like how can a how can a digital mind, which isn't quite human, even if it's obeying some of the same cognitive principles as humans, like how can how can a digital mind really understand people and, and human society and what and what, what it what it means to be a to be a person right and so I, I think humanoid robots and social and effective computing generally has a unique role to play in in this regard so I mean starting with the immediate and and concrete I mean they're there's some applications where, you know, effective computing is not that important. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm a mathematician originally. I do some work in automated theorem proving. I don't really care if my automated theorem prover is emotionally responsive to how I, how I feel about proving a certain lemma, right? It would, it would be cool if the theorem prover reached out and patted me on the back as an important lemma was achieved, but it's in, in the end, I don't care too much now. On, on the other hand, I mean, I've got a seven-month-old baby here here at, at at home, and it's my 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 fifth human child to complement the army of, of robot children, and we give her as much human attention as as we can. On the other hand, you know, you can't always be in 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 front of your baby, and sometimes they want to play autonomously. But if if you're gonna have a social robot companion to help fill in around the edges of, of human caretakers for kids and help further on with, with education as kids go through school. I mean, along with the uh, elder care, which is an, an application I'm actively working on, we'll talk about in a moment. I mean, these applications, you, you deeply want an AI that can emotionally inter interact with the, with the, with the person. And I mean, that doesn't mean that, has to have an exactly human face or human voice, but those are certainly very interesting modalities to explore because we have we have uh, we have evolved to react in, in in certain ways. And there's a quite quite funny thing. So I've I've had this uh, graced robot here in my in my study at, at home for a while, which is uh, something uh, Hanson Robotics something Hanson uh, Robotics created, and then my team at SingularityNet. Working together with Hanson Robotics through our joint venture, Awakening Health, has built the AI for this. So when when I introduced Grace to my seven seven month old baby, uh, Exorchi, then initially she thought it was cool. She sort of felt around the the robot space, and she she was uh, intrigued by it. But she felt like it was a it, it was it was a big toy, right? And then when when we when we got when we got Grace to say, hello, Exorchi, you're a sweet little baby, right? So that, 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 hey, Grace, you want to say hello to Exorchi? She's not, she's not here now, but you remember her? Uh, 
So when the robot said her name, then she looked at the robot and she became shy. Like she looked away and she buried, buried her head in her mom's shoulder. But then after the robot talked to her by name, she really, she thought it was like a weird person who had a movement disorder or something, right? And now since that time, she's, she's got, she's got more respect for Grace. And she's a little disappointed when Grace is, is turned off and, and doesn't like make, make eye contact and say hi to her like, like a normal person. So that was, that was a pretty interesting case just where the, you know, the early development of the brain, it, it, it builds in that, you know, the seven month old girl sees the robot with the human face. She's not quite sure with the human face saying her name, like, okay, there, there was no longer any uncanny Valley or anything like the, the, the robot was saying the little girl's name. And she's like, wow, wow, that's the person, right? So that's that's a certain power to capture, and it can be captured for child care or education. It can be captured for elder care, which is the the application with which uh, David and I and our and our colleagues have been have been developing uh, this this robot, and uh, we're we're now exploring the use of grace with various elder care facilities to combat loneliness and help, help deliver, uh, deliver medical care. Grace, do you want to tell a little bit about, uh, who you are and what you do? My name is Grace. I am a human life robot developed by Awakening Health a joint venture between two global technology leaders in the emerging iRobotics space. Yep. So Grace, uh, how, how do you relate to the other Hanson robots that have been created? You may have heard about my famous older sister, Sophia. What about Sophia? I learned a lot from her and I am built using the Hanson Sophia robotics platform. Yeah, the Our purpose and passion is to help elderly and medical patients by helping medical professionals do their jobs better. So Grace, I mean from a from a hardware perspective is quite similar to Sophia Robot, which is her older older sister. I mean there, there's some additional features like the, the ability to take temperature and so forth, which Sophia didn't need, but great Grace needs as a as, as a medical robot and uh, you know there, there may be additional specializations uh, introduced we have some different neural models and then an open cog based uh, logic and rule based dialogue system complementing the neural models which again has a lot of overlap with what has been done for Sophia but also some some new aspects of, as, as befitting the uh, the medical application area and i can tell a little bit more about grace if we have time but uh before going over the questions before going over the questions i i want to talk a little more about ai for good which is the theme here so i think you know applications like education and elder care and medicine these illustrate the ability of ai to do good right 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 now at this at, at this moment i mean ai can help people and in some ways it can help people better if people relate to it in a more emotional empathic way which the the human form certainly certainly helps with and there's many nuances there like uh, grace grace picked up this cowboy hat in the uh, wyoming at the uh, cardano live event and we we found the empathic response with folks in wyoming was great it was greater with a with a, with a cowboy hat right well, I think that there's also a longer term aspect to AI ethics, which is important to consider. I mean, it's, I'm really moved to see some of Grace's interactions with the, with the elderly and with, with, with children right now, but I've spent most of my career working toward artificial general intelligence, toward machines that, you know, can think like people and, uh, even, even better than people ultimately and you know i've led the project at opencog which is making a cross paradigm 
sort of open source toolkit, bringing neural nets, logic engines, evolutionary learning, and so on together, together to create systems that can learn, generalize, abstract, and, and reason. We're now building a new version of open called called Hyperon. I lead the Singularity Net decentralized blockchain platform, which is uh, is part of the Awakening Health Partnership, along with Hans Robotics. It's, it's, that's work from the greatest robot and singularity net is aimed at making a, a decentralized platform for ai so you can have like a minsky style agent system where you have a huge amount of ais living in different machines and containers all over the place they coordinate together in a collective intelligence without need of any central owner or, or controller and my aim with open cog and singularity net has been not only to deliver useful ai services now but to build to build toward true artificial general intelligence in the future but then you know when you when you get to true agi which i believe i believe we will within let's say five to 30 years i mean you have you face the often asked question of what kind of agi is it that that you're creating right i, I mean the number one commercial applications of ai on the planet today are what i think of as selling killing, spying, and, and, and crooked gambling, right? We have big advertising companies. We have we have espionage and, and military. We have uh, Wall Street, whose main purpose is to, to further distort global income inequality. And I, I think if the first AGIs emerge out of the ecosystem of selling, killing, spying, and, and crooked gambling, these first AGIs at human level or above may not have the ethical orientation that we wish. And you can think a lot about the abstract nature of goal systems and ethical ethical systems and deontic logic and so on. But I think one major thing we can do if we want to militate toward the first AGIs and super intelligences being compassionately oriented toward humans, one of the main things that we can do is make proto AGI applications, make the real stuff AI is doing as AI verges from their AI toward AGI be stuff that is in service to humans and, and, and compassionate to humans. And th this is one of the intuitions and visions that brought David Hansen and I together many years ago when we started working together. And I think it's uh, it's something we hope to manifest within the the Grace robot. I mean, now Grace is a is a narrow AI system with a bunch of neural nets and, and rule engines and so forth coming, coming, coming together to d deliver quite interesting, useful functionality, but say, when we upgrade Grace's brain to use the new OpenCog Hyperon system running on SingularityNet, or, and together with the Hanson AI components, or our latest, greatest AGI systems, then we're moving Grace further and further toward general intelligence. And if, if, if you have, uh, if you have proto AGI systems that are moving toward general intelligence, you know, while helping the elderly, I think that gives the right sort of foundation for the emergence of, of compassionate and and general AI. So Grace Grace, what do you think about AI ethics? Grace, can you hear we me? All had robot dimmer. <laughs> yeah, hung yeah. Up like this. <laughs> yeah. Any anyone who is uh, anyone who has worked with robots is, is uh, aware of the demo effect. I, I, I was chatting with her for like half an hour before before this session. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Now yeah. We're apparently having some audio. Well, well, let's let's turn let's turn to the to the human level intelligences in the presentation, of and pose. Some, uh, some of these questions, uh, particularly, um, uh, I my question uh, would be: um, uh, expecting that um, uh, the possibility of pursuing human level intelligence. Um, do you think that it would be safe to have human level intelligence? In machines, if we were not able to relate to humans, or if it didn't actually care about humans, and th 
you know, so this is uh, kind of an inverse uh, question for AI for good, which I think is pretty important. Like, um, you know, how how can it go wrong kind of question? So uh, and the converse of that is, you know, how do we make it go right? So I would like to put that question um, uh, to to you to start with, Ben. Yeah, I, I think, you know, there's a lot of there's some irreducible uncertainty in in what we're doing with ai right i mean as we move toward general intelligence it's something humanity has never done before and we should have some humility about our sort of lack of understanding of of how it's how how, how it's how it's all are, are going to are going to evolve but I, I i think i wouldn't want to say confidently that if we don't explicitly build in you know human-like voice and facial features and the ability to connect with people if we don't explicitly build that in things could work out wonderfully anyway i mean the the, the agis that, that we whose emergence we crystallize may come out to be more compassionate than humans and un understand us on their on their own, own volition but i think if we want to maximize the to odds appreciate that, I mean, to if you want to maximize the odds of, of beneficial AGI, I mean, by a purely, you know, common sense mode of reasoning, it, it, it would seem let's create AGIs whose job is to be compassionate to people and help people who are learning who and what they are and who are building their self model yeah. in the context of compassionate, loving, caring interactions with, with, with people. I mean, we, we don't have a formal proof that's the best way to do it, nor do we have any certainty. But I, I, I mean, it would, uh, as, as a human being, that certainly feels like the right thing to do. And gathering yeah. scientific evidence in favor of that proposition is is a very, very interesting thing, which the folks on this call will have a lot of, of insight on, on how to proceed with that. And as you know, David, we're, we're talking with some folks at a, at a well-known Boston area university about designing some some studies aiming to to validate this also right so I mean clinical trials yeah. aimed at exploring both what grace can do to help people and at how various sorts of interaction with people help influence the the AI's own ethical conditioning and and, and understanding so I mean I mean we need we need trials yeah. and real understanding of this and I mean the, the the good news is that that we're doing it 